birth rates are declining, and in less than 100 years, countries like Spain and Japan could have half as many people as they have now. How can that be a right-wing or left-wing talking point? What's going on? Elon? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage to truth and freedom. Do not allow your mind to be clogged and befuddled by their mindless propaganda and constant attempts to trap and hypnotize you. Stay close to us on this channel. Why don't you subscribe? Why don't you? Apparently, the fall in birth rates is a very real thing. There's a new documentary about it which looks into it at depth, which tries to be just a cold scientific analysis. But you can't have cold scientific analysis now. Everything is hotly politicized. But let's have a look at this birth rate issue and the impact it's going to have on your planet. And our cities are going to be choked with people and they will be impossible places in which to live and the explosions will be even worse. Most people think we, we have like too many people on the planet, but actually this is an outdated view. Coming from the world of data science, I felt I understood populations are going up and that that's a problem. When I saw what was actually happening, I couldn't sleep. I think that the biggest problem the world will face in 20 years is population collapse. Collapse. I agree. How could it be that suddenly countries are having so few children? I needed to go and find out. There are obviously chemical factors and social factors. We know that male fertility is decreasing, female fertility is decreasing. We are aware that the way that a culture measures significance and value has shifted, that there is a kind of prizing of working, of females working as being significant and important, and that that has become a cherished value. And attacking that and saying women ought and work is seen as an attack on female power and potency. And I wonder what role nature has at all at this point. On one side, the argument you have this enshrinement of ecology through the climate change movement elsewhere the nature of human beings as animals or as spirits or as creatures of this planet has become detached somehow we shouldn't just because we're born this or born that have to live within that framework and i'm certainly not offering an opinion on a subject that's become one of the most defining and contentious ones of our age i believe in people's individual freedom i also believe in nature certainly we appear to believe in nature in other areas of the conversation and i suppose what we're talking about here is primarily a demographic shift where you have an age population that don't have a workforce to look after them and don't have children to replace them. So ultimately, you're talking about economics and the distribution of resources. Of course, the solutions that will be offered, I suppose, will ultimately be technological. The fact is that we should be addressing at some point, what is the quantitative value of ongoing life? Why do you want people to stay alive forever and ever? Now, of course, if it's someone that I love, like my own mother or father, of course, I want them to live as long as possible, as I'm sure you do with your relatives. Let me know in the comments and the chat. But Essentially, the value of life is experiential. What is the experience of your life like? How do you feel? Is it meaningful? Are you connected to yourself, to other people, to purpose? Are you happy is essentially what I'm asking you. It feels now that what our lives have become is so desacralized and secularized that we live lives of the fulfillment of tasks. I'm not sure how these tasks have been set. Well, I am sure they're cultural and economic tasks that don't, in my opinion, connect deeply to essence, meaning, purpose, or even nature. What people usually don't think about is what do you do in a world where the playgrounds are empty and the nursing homes are all full? I keep oscillating between the idea of having my own children or uh, adopting. Ready to adopt in this particular moment? Like right, right now, now, now? Probably not. If I would have kids uh, now, I will have to change uh, all my life. From a cultural perspective, the value of children and the family can, of course, be critiqued and analysed. Some people will say that the nuclear family is a cultural construct, that tribal living is more native to our kind, to our species, where there are numerous relatives of multiple generations looking after the young and participating in child rearing. But when it comes to procreation, it's so deeply embedded in our coding, even if you want to look at this in a solely material material, rational, and let's say from a biological perspective, procreation is pretty significant, I would say. The same as eating, defecating, procreating, fornicating, things that seem to take place on the level of the animal body that are not to do with the individual, actually, are beyond the individual identity. But I feel like our culture has become so politicised 
realise that we're unable as a group to have a shared analytic of what being human is that is separate from our kind of oppositional left v right progress v tradition type politics. My personal position is you as an individual are worthy of respect and you as an individual should be free to live your life however you want to and I think to increasingly politicise those areas of the conversation makes it difficult to have a shared cultural agreement around what human beings are. I call this a birth gap, Matt. Right. I haven't seen anybody do this before. How are you saying? Wow. Wow. Gosh, it's kind of scary. I'm pessimistic because I don't think people realize what's going to happen. I don't know how and when it's going to stop. I want to emphasize this. The biggest issue in 20 years will be population collapse. Here's some information that pieces together the salient points from that documentary so we can understand the argument succinctly for ourselves. The world is ill-prepared for the global crash in children being born, which is set to have a jaw-dropping impact on society, say researchers. Falling fertility rates mean nearly every country could have shrinking populations by the end of the century. And 23 nations, including Spain and Japan, are expected to see their populations halve by 2100. Countries will also age dramatically, with as many people turning 80 as there are being born. So certainly it appears that there are demographic shifts and changes on well not even on the horizon happening now the fertility rate the average number of children a woman gives birth to is falling if the number falls below approximately 2.1 then the size of the population starts to fall in 1950 women were having an average of 4.7 children in their lifetime researchers at the university of washington institute for health metrics and evaluation showed the global fertility rate nearly halved to 2.4 in 2017 and their study published in the lancet projects it will fall below 1.7 by 21 100. Now, you can see why women would say, hang on a minute, what you're suggesting is that a woman's primary function is to bear and rear children. Why is it this area in particular where the project of civilization has to be arrested? We've been having to create agriculture, the industrial revolution, the technological revolution, machines to do all of our jobs, animal husbandry, but in the area of the function of a woman, you want to stick to what's on the label, as it were. And I can see why, you know, a woman or women or particular groups within uh, the gender of women would have issue with that because what civilization does is meddles with the flow of nature. As soon as we have medicine, as soon as we control animals, as soon as we control crops, we're starting to say, oh, we're not living entirely in harmony with nature. So why are you saying in this area we have to be in harmony with nature? And I suppose the argument that documentary is making is because the species is under threat. I suppose the kind of technological arguments will come will be artificial insemination, growing children in pods. We've already done a thing about that, haven't we, elsewhere? And further divorcing ourselves from nature. But perhaps the human project has been particularly since civilization, one of creating distance from ourselves and the teleology that's taken us further away from the conditions of our origin. Let me know in the chat in the comments what you think about that. As a result, the researchers expect the number of people on the planet to peak at 9.7 billion around 2064 before falling down to 8.8 .8 billion by the end of the century. That's a pretty big thing. Most of the world is transitioning into natural population decline, researcher Professor Christopher Murray told the BBC. I think it's incredibly hard to think this through and recognise how big a thing it is. Is, it's extraordinary we'll have to reorganise societies. It's nothing to do with sperm counts or the usual things that come to mind when discussing fertility. Instead, it is being driven by more women in education and work, as well as greater access to contraception, leading to women choosing to have fewer children. If it indeed is the result of the choice of individuals and how that plays out across a society, then, well, what do you do? suggest to women that they can't do that? I mean, what do you do? I guess you make different arguments about the culture. I reckon that the dream that your personal fulfillment is achieved through career is tangential to a bigger idea. You should be free. You should be free to be whoever you want to be. And I don't know that anymore if my working life is what gives me freedom. A lot of the time I think you're imprisoned by this model. And I, how do you feel about your working life? Unless you have something vocational that gives you purpose, whatever your gender, I'm not sure that work is what gives you your purpose anymore unless you know god you're working in a hospice or you're helping people get well or you're teaching children all of which <laughs> align with the kind of roles we would have in a pre-civilized society i would argue let me know in the chat japan's population is projected to fall from a peak of 128 million in 2017 to less than 53 million by the end of the century it's mad isn't it because it declines quick because people just once they die <laughs> that's it it starts to radically decline so i suppose you could change it quickly as well 
Italy is expected to see an equally dramatic population crash from 61 million to 28 million over the same time frame. They are two of 23 countries, which also include Spain, Portugal, Thailand and South Korea, expected to see their population more than half. That's jaw-dropping, Professor Christopher Murray said. However, this will be a truly global issue, with 183 out of 195 countries having a fertility rate below the replacement level. The study projects the number of under fives will fall from 681 million in 2017 to 401 million in 2100. The number of eight-year-olds will soar from 141 million in 2017 to 866 million in 2100. I know loads of you will like it because it's a direct contra-argument to the idea of population explosion. And there are too many people in the world, stuff that say you will have heard Bill Gates say, for example. So I think a lot of people will like that. Aha, it's a rebuttal to many of those arguments. Also, it's saying, never mind climate change. What about this issue? Which I know a lot of people will hate and a lot of people will like. But it's interesting to look at this simply as data rather than an agenda-led piece of information. What it invites you to look at is the fact that we live on one planet, there's a finite number of people. We could organise society differently, both on a macro and micro level. You know that usually what I talk about is decentralisation so that we have individual freedom, community and collective freedom. But it's interesting as well to look at what's happening globally because surely these numbers will be impactful. Who pays tax in a massively aged world? Who pays for healthcare for the elderly? Who looks after the elderly? Will people still be able to retire from work? Wow, not in France, baby. Professor Murray says, I find people laugh it off. They can't imagine it could be true. They think women will just decide to have more kids. If you can't find a solution, then eventually the species disappears. But that's a few centuries away. Professor Ibrahim Abubakar, University College London said, if these predictions are even half accurate, migration will become a necessity for all nations and not an option. To be successful, we need a fundamental rethink of global politics. The distribution of working age populations will be crucial to whether humanity prospers or withers. I think it's a crisis that we'd better tackle now before it reaches a tipping point which may not be reversible. Lead author Hagay Levine of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem's Hadassah Braun School of Public Health told The Guardian. Levine added that the findings serve as a canary in the coal mine. We have a serious problem on our hands that if not mitigated could threaten humankind's survival. But perhaps the argument that this is entirely about the progression of a female's role in a traditionally male-led society and improvements in birth control is a limiting one. Perhaps increasing inequality, a culture where we loom between crises, is having an impact on people's goals and spiritual aspirations. If you move from economic crash in 2008, having just had the 2001 attacks on the culture, endless war, pandemics, do people really want to have children? Perhaps the deeper spiritual sense that we're living in a culture in decline and in despair does something to us as animals and spirits that prevents us wanting to progress and procreate. It doesn't feel safe here anymore, does it? We don't trust authority. We don't trust any of our institutions. What people need, whether they're a male parent or a female parent, is a sense that they are safe and secure. And I know that I feel as a father and I feel that my wife feels as a mother, this ain't a great place to be bringing children sometimes. And we're in an all right condition, in an all right country with an all right income. This isn't just that women's roles have changed culturally and there's better access to contraception, though of course I'm sure that's a factor, there are perhaps deeper existential changes that people en masse feel, I don't want to be here anymore, I don't want to have children. And also the fetishization and celebration of the individual, that your role is as, oh, I'm me, this is me, just do it man, be the best you you can be, it means that people don't think of service and duty and family, and I'm not making that claim against any particular gender or uh, sex, I'm saying look at what our culture tells us is important. So I would say that in addition with the factors observed within this document and that documentary, we should consider a decline in hope a sense of spiritual despair, cultures that are falling apart more broadly, a crisis where we lurch from one crisis to another, are all factors in making people not feel like they're all nest and have a bunch of babies, because barely a day passes where you're not contemplating the bloody apocalypse. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Turn on the notification bell. We make this content every single day and it's vital that you see it and watch the live show over on Rumble at these times too. But more important than any of that is that you please stay free.